זאת אומרת, יש חמאסניקים שחושבת כמו ישראלית. זה בסדר, אנחנו משווים חיי עד החיים. שם זה לא... Let me set this up. This is Mordecai, פרופסור מורדקאי. And so he's, he's basically um, telling people in their language that he, you're, you're thinking like an Israeli, and that's a good thing. He's, he's, he's not saying that you're, you're bad, but he's trying to get inside the head of, of uh, Hamas and how, how this is all going to play out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> קטוע רגל וקטוע יד, וביד השנייה נותרו לו שתי אצבעות. הוא יעמוד על גג של מסגד הרוס ויעשה וי והוא ניצח. Mm-hmm. למה? כי הילדים שלו ימשיכו, והנכדים שלו ימשיכו. כי, כי הוא נשאר, הוא שרד. ולכן, זה תמונות הניצחון. צריך, צריך להבין פה, זה ראש אחר. זה קריטריונים אחרים לניצחון ו... אבל הנה, הנה אנחנו רואים, אבל כן חמאסניקים נכנעים. זאת אומרת, יש חמאסניקים שלו ימשיכו. Really? He threatened the United States, he threatened everybody. Iran, he said, we're coming for all of you. Huh. Hmm. So, yeah. so By the way, do you understand what they're saying? Like, if no, you didn't no, have no, no. I have his, uh, I have, and where he did it, I'm like, uh, No, I'm saying, but when you hear Hebrew, no, they're contemporary no. Hebrew, do you understand? I don't know. No, he came when he was young. No, no, I'm just saying. But no. most Palestinians at my oh. age, if I had been exposed to... Like young Palestinians were. Yeah, they also understand the fluent yeah, speech. Yeah, fluently, but yeah. no, I didn't because I wasn't around them much. So he, he's basically telling him um, what the, yeah, the mindset. I, I've said more than once that Hamas, if, if only <laughs> one of <laughs> the Hamas, We must understand that this is a different type of thinking. So he's saying, the, the person he's talking to is saying, but we see Hamas members surrendering. By the way, this is, I have to explain this for the podcast. Uh, yeah, people yeah, don't and, see and, the video. Yeah, and that was actually a lie. Those were not Hamas. And, right, right, right. <laughs> Those were civilians. There's still thousands of them out there. This is not a story we look at. But we see a lot of people here. Why are we talking about the war? Why are we talking about the war? Why are we talking about the war? Will the Americans support you forever? Will Europe support you? Will the Jews still support you? These are the important questions. יש פסוק בקוראן שאומר, אין אללה אמר סאבירין. אללה הוא עם בעלי היכולת לסבול לאורך זמן. תבין, הסאבירין. סאבר זה אדם שיכול להיות במנהרה חודשיים ושלושה. פיישנס זה פור המאס ממברס, פור טו דו טרי מונטס אין הטונל, ואי דו נסי אין דיילי. לא רואה אור יום, בכושר הוא אוכל, אוכל בכושר הוא כלום, יוצא עם הקלאץ' ויהרוג יהודים. למה? כי יש לו את היכולת לסבול לאורך זמן. וזה לא ברור. This is unclear to me. עם החברה הישראלית. אז אתה אומר שבעצם הפנטזיה הישראלית שאולי נגיע לזה נקודת שבירה של החמאס, שבה החמאס פשוט... באמת, או ייכנע, או יקרוס לתוך עצמו, זו פנטזיה ישראלית שאין בינה לבין המציאות קשר. אתם חיים בתוך הבועה הישראלית. So he's saying, the person he's talking to is saying, wait, are you saying that this collapse of Hamas is a fantasy? And then he responds saying, you're living inside an Israeli bubble. הם חיים למען אללה. They live for Allah. אללה איתם. Allah is with them. הם לוחמי ג'יהאד. אנחנו לוחמי חירות ישראל. We are free in Israel. בסדר. אנחנו לא לוחמים מלחמת קודש. We are not fighting a holy war. יום אחד היה לי ויכוח עם ציפי לבני. הייתי איתה באיזשהו פאנל. ואמרתי לה, פה המרכיב הדתי הוא דומיננטי אצלם. אצלם אללה הוא השחקן העיקרי במשחק. For them, Allah is the main player. 
if not the only player. For us, if God is even present on the field, he's a substitute player. That's a huge difference in terms of psychological capacity. I'm not saying our moral capacity is less important. But they are fighting a At least half of us don't want to see this. So it's, it's important for us to understand that this is not a... a Can you send me that? Yeah, yeah, I'll send you that. Yeah, um, this, is, this is the Israelis' own uh, perception of what the Palestinian psyche is. They say Hamas, but that's a code word for m- Palestinians, Muslims in general. Mm-hmm. Like they want to understand, like, wait, what keeps them going? Because they've starved them, they've bombed them, twenty thousand killed. They've done everything humanly possible. They've blockaded them. They're 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 doing everything to make their life miserable. This is the undertone. This is what you're hearing is is someone trying to understand their psychology. But what's happening in the background? is them trying to rationalize that we've done everything to them mm. to make them want to leave, but they're not leaving. So he's explaining to them that they have a, this idea called in the Lahim Asabirin, their conception of Sabar is not even in Hebrew. They have an entirely different worldview that we can't even imagine. We, in, in, on the battlefield, God is a substitute player. For them, Allah is their main player. On on the battlefield, Subhanallah. This is what you have. He's he's congratulating you, even though he, even though he's he's a Zionist, and but he doesn't know that he's actually giving you what you want to hear, what you need to know. That they don't, they're they're not patient. They want the win now. They want to. They're making a fool of themselves around the world. The whole world is seeing their evil, mm. their destruction. They can't even play the patient game, the 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 game of being patient and and what telling like if they wanted to listen to what you, the United States and their allies, their legitimate allies, want them to do, they're not listening to them. They're like, we want Gaza now because they're not patient. Mm. It is so beautiful coming from somebody who's as a voice that's looking out for them and telling them how to, but in a way, it's like. It's so amazing how Allah's work happens. Like, if a Muslim, I just want you to think, if a Muslim had to say that as a Muslim, saying the same words he had, it'd be like whatever. But this is a respected guy that they brought on. Yeah, and he's he's doing this work, and we had no idea that the effect would be this way because Allah wants it to happen this way, right? Yeah. And the he doesn't realize, you know, like I I know I said this before, but when I used to teach at school, we had this lesson once. This was. When the whole ISIS thing was happening, and, um, mm-hmm. there was a uh, there was a uh, uh, skit on Saturday Night Live with Chris Rock and a few other people, and you know they were pitching to the Shark Tank uh, a group called ISIS, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, they it was it was really interesting because they were like clarifying and like kind of talking about some wickedness, like you know underhand comments, wickedness of United States and its support for ISIS or whatever, but. You know, they had like a La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah on their head, on their chest. They had a poster board. And they had, and for me it was so interesting, and I want to show this to school because the one of the lessons we were talking about is Rasulullah saying in a hadith that there's going to come a time where La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah is going to enter every household. Right? And La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah will enter every household whether it's through comedy and people see it and it brands something in their brain yeah. or they hear it through people representing whether it's through pa- positive or ne- but it's still going to enter their homes yeah. and the same thing happens now here where this dude he's actually whether he realizes or not he's empowering Muslims he's bringing jihad back into the medium now. He, when he talked about jihad and talked about in he made Muslims I'm pretty sure Muslims didn't think about what he was talking about as sabr or what Islam actually says about sabr yeah. or an element of it and the other thing that Hebrew, they don't have that same word for supper, the same translation, or the same understanding that we do. But bring examples of how they stay under tunnels for three months. For them, that's supper because they're doing it for Allah, right? So it's like he, he's sent, in a sense, to be 
in their color, but in actuality, he's empowering the Muslims and not only teaching the Muslims, but like, dude, I didn't think about that. But if it was a Muslim doing that, because he's one of our own, we wouldn't probably give it the same type of attention, right? So all these dynamics are being played and put in because Allah wants change to happen. And when Allah wants change to happen, He creates His means. And to prove that how undignified they are to be custodians of the Holy Land. Yes, sir. The Christians have Great already point. proved themselves during the Crusades before Saladin mm. came and liberated them. They proved themselves as incapable of being custodians of the Holy Land. Now, the Jews never had that ability. And they've proven to the world that they cannot be custodians. That they, that they, well, I didn't even think about that. They're, very they're, good point. they're, That's they're, a great point, bro. apartheid, even, even in the West Bank or, or, or just in Israel itself, it's, it's, it's an apartheid state. So how, how could you claim that you, you are uh, benevolent and, and merciful and, and uh, will judge between different religions accordingly? Hmm. You're not. And the only ones who have done that are the Muslims. So one more group left, brothers. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's it. That's it. No, meaning who's next? I think. I many. think this is. I think these people are ending. Yeah, and I think well, they are, are next. Ending. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, and, I think um, they've so gone if rogue. You, if you look what? at it in the grand scheme of things, what Sim said is like he hit the nail on the head because on the day of judgment, Allah is going to gather up all of humanity, and then He's going to ask each one of them, right? And Allah's just, so He gives you money in this world, and then He. You know, rewards you or punishes you how you use that money. He gives you power in this world. And he's just. Allah is very just. He gives everyone a fair shot. So he gave the Christians, he gave the Muslims, and now he gave, you know, um, the Jews a chance to run the Holy Land. Exactly like how Sim said. And then everyone is going to be rewarded and punished according to how they handled it. Hmm. And I think now that all the major groups are done. I mean, it's a... It's a very... Uh, mm, now we're talking. Yeah, I like to look at... <laughs> I, I really like to look at global power shifts and how yeah. globally power is shifting between the different groups and understanding how Allah gives each group power and tests them. And then it goes through group after group. Yeah, and gives them different type capabilities. Look, one of the capabilities that Allah gave Bani Israel is actually a power of deception, right? They, are, they were given that. Whether that's, look, a, that's the Mossad's uh, slogan, by the yeah, way. Yeah, by, by way, way of deception, deception of yeah. course. That's that's why that book is so crazy, because they're literally speaking in Islamic terminology of what Allah gives certain qawm something, yeah. and they boast about it, and they probably should, yeah. but they shouldn't be misusing it. But the main thing here is, look, you know, we say that we're not against Jews, or that's that's very true, but let's give it some context to people, because this question was asked to me, and we maybe we could finish off along these lines is. We say that when Allah is talking about in the Quran, when He's talking about in Surah Al-Baqarah and, and times, cursing Bani Israel, who is He actually referring to? Because He's talking about all of Bani Israel, right? Or is He talking about Bani Israel and say, hey, don't fall into this again? And are some of those same traits of Bani Israel remaining to Yawm Al-Qiyamah until they become Muslim so, they, so people can see what Allah is referring to, right? Mm -hmm. What that actually means is one way of looking at it is, the Zionist entity happens to be from the Jews. It doesn't mean that every single Jew, because we have some Jews that are actually atheists. There's Jews by, 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 by culture, right? They're cultural Jews. Yeah. But the only Jewish entity, quote unquote, in the world right now is Israel. Yeah. And it happens to be when they're an entity, as a Zionist entity, which happens to be some Jews and some whatever else, it happens to be everything Allah says in the Quran about them is actually true. When they're in power and they're when they are, are unjust. And the manifestation now is shown from them. And dude, I didn't even think about that example like that you just gave. Is that these shifts that happen, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran mentions that some people we give them power and then we shift Nudawiluha. And then it's the next one's turn. And then it's the next one's turn to show examples of who they are. Yeah. Right? And the only thing that I mean, obviously, we, we've we've made lots of assumptions and hoping of what is going to happen, but obviously Allah always has something else planned. But the observation, nonetheless, is amazing that the Christians had a chance, the Jews had a chance, the Muslims had a chance, and it seems that what's ripe now is, number one, and the next thing is that Muslims Muslim rule around the corner because the whole world's idea of Israel has changed. I can't imagine it going back to what it was before. No. No, but now taxpayers, yeah. Chenk Uger, all these guys, like my taxpayer is not going. He, do you ever see it? Sorry to, <laughs> he's identifying as a Muslim now again. Did you see that? 
Yeah, well, he, he's he referring to himself as a Muslim. He's still an atheist. He's still an atheist, yeah. but he's using that thing as like, oh, because I'm a Muslim. You're saying yeah. that? Yeah. He, he never said that before. Shank Uger, the guy from Young Turks, who's running oh, for yeah, presidency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, it, I just found that interesting. In 2024. Yeah, I just, I, just, I just saw that. I was like, hmm, this is interesting. But anyways. His yeah. family's Muslim. Well, so his family's so, Muslim. So he's still, he's still, he identifies. He's culturally, kind of, yeah. Yeah, culturally. Yeah, no, I know that. You, but, you know, the, the Crusaders failed. The Zionists failed. But when the Muslim ruled it, they didn't f- fail. Hmm. The Muslims failed at the end economically, and the people rebelled and caused treason. Uh, in particular, in the land of Hejaz, okay. Uh, but I will tell you this: it's amazing to listen to that guy talk, and he tells the truth of the situation, and he sees that we are victorious and excelling, and yet you don't have Muslims who see what he sees. Hmm. You don't have Muslims who. They look at the carnage and the death. You didn't see. He didn't. He didn't look at the carnage and the death. He looked at the whole picture, mm. and he understood that the resistance, Hamas, is not losing but winning, and they are patient and they believe in Allah. He has more recognition of our belief and those fighters down there and their belief than Muslims themselves. How many Muslims do you see on here talking about, they've murdered everybody, they've, I don't know how much I can take of this. Yeah, how much you can take of this, you're not even going through it. You're going mm. through it mentally. Mm. The people down there are going through it. Yeah. And yet you're weak. You're weak, you can't stand up and say, you think as a Palestinian, I sit and I watch some of this stuff. You think I let this stuff phase me? As much as it hurts me, I look at the bigger picture of how much good we're doing, how the world has been awakened by these people. These people are not liberating Palestine. These people are liberating the world. These people have liberated the world. These people have awakened the American people, the German people, the French people. These people are awakening the world to show the world that satanic movements are in full control of your governments. And they are backing a movement that is satanic. This Zionist entity is satanic in itself. This is a movement that does not believe in God. This is a movement that says we're Jewish, we, uh, d- uh, but we're not Torah people, but uh, it's a nationality. But uh, then they pull all, all types of religious stuff they have intertwined in their culture and is a filthy ideology. And, and to build yeah, on go, the, go ahead. I'm sorry. And to build on what Brother Imad just said, look, there's a lot of Muslims that are going to be very disheartened and they're going to have a crisis of faith. And building on what uh, our Bay Sim said, look, if you're having a crisis of faith and you're like, why is Allah giving these people power? Why is Allah allowing these people to destroy us? Why is Allah allowing these people to, you know, murder innocent babies? Going back to what Sim and Imad said, Allah is just, he's going to give everyone an opportunity. And if he didn't give everyone an opportunity, then on the day of judgment, the people might have an opportunity to complain and say, oh Allah, you never gave me a fair shot. You never gave me a fair test. And so, understand that everything that's happening is part of the grand scheme of things exactly. in the sense of the day of judgment not exactly. in this world in exactly. this world is the test so like I'm, I'm i come from a teaching background if i don't give every single student if i have 25 students i have to give them all the same exact test test with the same as exact questions if i give one group of students an easier exam with easier multiple choice questions and I give everyone else a really hard essay question it's not, not being fair just I'm not being just of course and uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings victory from the the most weakest among us just like how he did with the with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the weakest among the Quraysh in, in the Meccan society that's how he brings victory and um, uh, his 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 religion will never be stood up by the bourgeoisie the the, the wealthy Look at David, peace be upon him. Yeah. David was a small guy, skinny, thin guy. Yeah. You could probably slap him and knock him over. He was so small and so frail. This is David, alayhi salam, Prophet Dawood, alayhi salam, that these people t- supposedly follow. These Zionists. He was a little thing, and he offered to take on Jalut. Jalut. And he beat Jalut. Look at Salah al 
Salah Din was a frail guy who was always sick. He had a hard time getting on his horse and liberated Palestine. He wasn't even a like a radically religious person. Salah Din was an ordinary. Uh, may Allah have mercy on his. Was an ordinary guy, but look what he look. He had such an effect on the world that when the Khalifat fell, the French uh, general came to Syria and kicked his grave and said, Wake up, Salahuddin, we're back. <laughs> That's these people. You mean to tell me you're fighting a people who don't know? These are people who are anti-God, anti-Muslim. Why is it that these people are fighting the Muslims? Everything is about Muslims because they've subjugated everything else. If you brought Islam into the West, if you brought Islam into the United States right now, and all the people in the United States became Muslim, what happens to the alcohol industry? What happens to riba? The banks are done. The economic system as we know it is finished. These greedy people will be gone. And if this happened all over the world, this is why their fight against their fight is totally against Islam. When you say that they, they, they subjugated everything else, do you mean that everything else fell and the Muslims are the last ones standing? Is that what you meant by that? I mean, they, they you know, you go to Christianity and it tells you give on to Caesar what is his and give on to God what is his, meaning separate mm -hmm. the two. You know, don't be against governments. They've, so I'm saying they've corrupted things, they've instilled man-made man, man man things into these religions, and the only thing that has not been corrupted is mm -hmm. the Qur'an and Islam. But they don't realize that there's a verse in the Qur'an where Allah takes an oath, uh, or not an oath, it takes it upon himself that he will s preserve this religion. Mm -hmm. And he has done so. It is a miracle in itself that nothing has been taken out or put into this Qur'an uh, 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 that mainstream Muslims believe. So they're not going to do, they're going to fail at every turn. It's over with. They're going to fail at every turn. Mm. This fight is between evil and good. That's it. That's, That's it. it. And you choose which side you're going to be on. And if you're going to be weak and disheartened by what's happening to these people, these children and their mothers and their fathers as Muslims, we believe they are the children are going to be birds in heaven. And they're not only going to be that, they're going to be keys for the doors to heaven for their mothers and fathers. Allah Allah. Okay, so if you don't believe in that and you are weak in faith and you decide that we are looking bad and they are doing this and doing that while thousands of them are being killed fighting Muslims and they're saying we're fighting ghosts. That's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done it in the past where he sent down angels to fight with the believers. But Allah could wipe all this all out. But there's a duty for us. And if you as a Muslim, you go pray five times a day or you pray whatever times a day and you fast and you do all this thing and you are saddened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that sadness and depression is from Satan. So there, you have to check your iman. And you have to disconnect yourself from this material world and the fear of losing things in this world. Hmm. And I'm not saying go out and hurt people. That's not what we're talking about. But at least be strong enough to know that these people are dying down there. And but they are going to a place that we believe is better is the is the forever place. Yes, sir. And that the other people. Did you see when they? I've said it before the stench of the bodies of the Israeli soldiers in freezers. Have you ever put meat in freezer where it started to stink? Never. But for them, they're stinking. Where the guy walked in, an Israeli to show the bot to show the, the bags of the dead I Israeli soldiers. And it's in a freezer. You could see the st the smoke in there from being cold. And he couldn't stand the smell of their bodies. Yet in Gaza, they were walking around saying you could smell misk. Wow, my God. You understand what I'm saying? This is not a time for to be weak in faith. This is not a time for you to question Allah. These people down there fighting, they're not saying what you say. They're not doing what you do. What did they say? They said, we don't need food. We don't need your water. Hmm. We don't need your sympathy or empathy. Oh, Allah. Oh. Um, <clears throat> that's our show. Heart pumping, bro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> folks, Please make sure to 
hit like if you haven't subscribed already please do so uh thank you all for listening we had a great turnout um uh, make sure you s- help us out on patreon patreon.com forward slash the man from luke's uh, this is an entirely uh, this show is entirely funded by you we do not get paid through youtube we're completely demonetized and uh, are entirely funded by you by yourself by your support by your sharing of these episodes and you telling other people about it this is how the show grows because they've completely turned down the algorithm dial for us no matter how many likes and, and celebrities we get on it's just they've they've just turned on our, our dial or our reach um so you can do your part by sharing please um and, and helping out in whatever way yes, you can please now uh, that being said for my co-hosts um if i may say yeah, uh, go ahead please share like it doesn't take long and if there's something in your mind saying i'll do it a little bit later it's th- something from shaitan whispering in your ear this is an important uh broadcast and it should be shared. You should at least take the effort. There are Muslims around the world who are starving and dying, and they're doing everything in their power to fight. So I ask you to please share and put the word out there. We need people to hear. It's not for just you to hear. Sometimes I share things on social media, and it sits there, and I'm like, bro, I sent it to you so you could share it. I didn't send it to you for you to just look at it. <laughs> share it and like it, bro. Let's move yeah. it, and that's how it grows. Absolutely. Thank you. Love you. We love you all, too. Yeah.